Okay, so in this video, I want to make a quick update on how I get my models printed, uh, ready to print vertically. Uh, as opposed to a horizontal print, uh, I want to print them vertically so I can stack them, uh, use my print bed as efficiently as possible. Um, so I'm going to kind of cruise through my process. I'll add some other videos to talk about some of the tips and tricks and some of the reasoning. But for now, this is just more of a, a A to Z how-to. So the first thing that you'll notice is these models are slightly canted or slightly rotated. There's a little bit of a cant as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure they're aligned. And I'm going to make sure that they align them both at the same time. So I've got both models on here in Mesh Mixer. I'm going to click on the lower model. And now I can click on over here, Transform, or just press the T button. Now I can orient things by rotating this little guy right here and get to the, to the point where the premolars seem to be fairly equal from the grid. And now I'm looking at the canines and I'm noticing this one's a little bit farther forward. Um, you can look at other landmarks, but I feel like the canines are the most consistent. And it reversed back on me a little. There we go. And that looks pretty darn good. One other key point to notice is that the um, second molars uh, there's just a little bit of a distance from this line and this line as well. So I know that's pretty even and that's a, it's going to help us uh, as we move forward. So now I've got that approved, accepted if you will. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to show you how to work up one model. You can uh, expand that to do the opposite model as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press control, control A, or actually let's hide the lower so we don't get confused here. I'm going to press control A, which is the same thing as select all. The whole thing is selected. Now, the, now one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to accidentally ex, uh, keep this information on here. So I'm going to step back for a second. I'm going to hit escape. And I want to trim off all the excess, extraneous data. So once again, press S to select or click the little button over here. I'm going to draw a little line. And I'm just going to basically inscribe all of this data, click the delete button and it's gone. If you're using a Mac, press the X button. Once again, this little tail right here, I don't like any of these little things to be sticking off here. Now uh, I've got a pretty smooth border. Last thing I want to do is press, I'm going to move forward and hit Control A again to highlight everything. And although it looks smooth to me, I want this to be super smooth. How smooth this is, I want all of this to be smooth. So I'm going to press the B button, which is the same thing as Modify Smooth Boundary. It's going to show me a little smooth line right here. And I'm just going to click Accept to approve that. This is going to prevent errors in the long run. So just don't forget that step. You will have issues if you do. You could trim this area up right here, but it just doesn't matter. Now I've still got it all selected. I'm going to press the D button or extrude. This is going to allow us to start building our base vertically. Now the first number I'm going to, that's going to default, I'm going to change this to 16. You can go with 12 or more, anywhere in that range is going to be just fine. But the, the higher, the better, honestly. I'm going to change this to uh, the Y axis, which is going to tell the software which direction I want it to go, straight vertically. Now, if I was doing the bottom, I would hit negative 16. Okay. Now I'm going to click Flat Offset. And I'm going to click Accept. OK, so now we notice that these little black stripes indicate this model is quite literally inside out. Long story, but what I'm going to tell you is to go ahead and hit Control-A again so that it not only selects this part, but this part up here. Now everything, I've, I've just put Control-A. We're going to wait for a second. Now everything is selected. If I come up here to um, Edit, come down here to Flip Normals, let it process for a second, and everything that is in the inside will now be the, be the outside and vice versa. OK, so the next thing I want to do is right now, you could say that you're done. You could you could print things right down on this. Uh, you could print horizontally on this print bed right here. Um, but what I'm actually going to do first is I want to print these vertically. So I'm going to make a plane cut off the back here. Uh, we need to do that so that it knows where how to position it on the print bed. I'm going to come to Edit, Plane Cut. Now, this is showing us the, the invisible part was what's going to be discarded. So we can flip that by pressing this big fat arrow right here. 
and now this part will be kept, and this part will be invisible. Now we can dial this little plane back in whatever degree we want. We can rotate it. I just click that button and move my mouse back. If we come over here to the little uh, hashtags, this allows us to actually pick the, the exact degree at which it is oriented. Okay, so right now I'm at 90 degrees, so it's going to be f completely vertical. Let's move this back closer to where we want it. If you see these little hashtags here, you can press the up arrow and down arrow to make it um, click to smaller and bigger increments. If you don't like that at all, in the transform button, there's a, there's a little checkbox that you can click that says um, uh, enable snapping. Just uncheck that. Okay, so one thing I do notice is that um, this would this would probably print just fine as is with this directly 90 degree plane cut. But if these incisors that are all retruded, retroclined, what we want to do is we want to take this plane and make sure it's it is not um, parallel to the incisors. So in that case, I might come over here and dial it five or even 10 degrees. If I'm missing a tooth anywhere in the arch, I'm probably going to go to 10. Um, but 5 is probably my, my standard. Almost every single one I do at a 5 degree tilt. Okay. So here we are. We're all good here. Now I do want to show you one thing that can occur. Right now we've got nice closed off cuts here. That does not always occur. I'll see if I can find a spot where it is aired. So there you go. We do not want it hollow like this. We can fix that, but it, it's a bit of a pain. So moving it back and forth is going to be best, if possible, to um, allow us to have the most um, seamless, easy to work with prints. And I'm actually trying to find a spot where it's not quite perfect, so I can show you how to fix it. Um, but it's not giving me any um, bad cuts. They're all pretty well sealed. Um, or completely open. So we want them to be completely closed or um, mostly closed and we can repair it using the inspector tool. I may have seen it back here just a second ago. Right, sorry. I'm looking on that right heel. Right there. Okay, so I want to show you an example. There we go. We've got two holes here. So how can we fix it if this is the best we can get? It's fairly simple. Click accept. And now, if I come over here to the Analyze tool, click Inspector, and now we've got these little globes. Click on this, let it fix that. Click on this, let it fix that. Now, don't assume that it's 100% fixed. There still might be an error. So how do we find out? We click Done, click Inspector again, and let it see. And see, this one does have a small remaining hole that we can't even see. Click, a pr click on that globe again, hit Done, and check again. I've never had to repair it more than two, maybe once, three times, but just go ahead and do that a couple times until you don't see any more errors show up. Very important that you do that. I'm now done with this. And so now, this step right here is something that I do. I hollow out the model. You do not have to do that, particularly if you're only doing a set of models for a wax up or study models or what have you. But if you're going to be printing ortho models, you end up with uh, a lot of models, and it can save you maybe a dollar per model. So if you're doing f you know 20 up or 20 lower, that could be $40 uh, in saved resin, potentially. So what I'm going to do is, um, one quick note, sorry, before I move forward is, I would ideally like a couple millimeters of landing area back here. I'm not going to go and redo that, but do try to aim for a good two millimeters distal to the second molars. Um, anyway, I'm going to proceed for now, but keep that in mind. So I'm going to click on Edit, Hollow. Again, skip this step if you don't want to mess with it. It's an extra little step. I'm going to change the off, uh, the total offset, which basically means how thick it's going to be in here. This is two millimeters right now. I've just changed it to three. Click Update Hollow. So this is going to make all of my models three millimeters thick. Um, I've dabbled with thinner thicknesses. I just find the models are a little more prone to fracture. So three millimeters is is a good safe bet. Once that's done, I click Accept, and although you can't tell, the model is now hollow. So now the last thing I'm going to do is I don't need a base this tall. In fact, I don't want it because if you're going to do a suck down on it, you're really stretching that suck down material. So you really want to be about 18 mil or 16 millimeters, between 15 and 17. So all I'm going to do here is do another plane cut. 
And then, once again, this is the discarded area, so let's click this fat arrow, invert what's kept and what's discarded, bring this up a little ways, and here we go. Let's look up top. We see that this is all filled in here. Had I skipped that smooth boundary, we may not have a, it may actually be hollow, like where I showed you on the heels where it was open. We do not want that. You need to back up and smooth that boundary if you forgot. That's a very big and common issue. Click accept, and at this point, I am completely done. Okay? So, just to give you an idea of how this would work, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, show you right here. I've already exported a model very similar to that to my desktop. To export, just click export right here. But since I've already got one ready, I'm going to click right here, go to my desktop, click on upper print ready model, and you see it looks very similar. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the orientation. Let me zoom in on this. Click on the orientation option menu right here, click select base, and wherever I put it, it's going to align at perpendicular. If I want to print horizontal, do that. If I want to print vertical, come to the heels. I can now move it into the middle of the print bed, and you can see that now I am ready to go. I've got a bunch of models. I can orient them all right here and stack them up, and uh, it would look something like, uh, cancel, sorry. Let's duplicate this, duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So if you were printing a bunch of models, Obviously, you wouldn't print the same model necessarily, but for ortho, you might have a bunch of progressive models that would all look like this. Keep in mind, we want to do this process at the beginning before we do our orthodontic setup. Otherwise, we have to do this once for every single model, and we don't want to do that. If we do it one time, then as we do our ortho alignment in a software like Blue Sky Plan, we can then, uh, each model will be exported with these flat heels ready to print. Okie doke. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'm going to add some other videos that kind of go over some of the errors that sometimes occur, uh, particularly that open mesh here. Um, and yeah, I'll try to add videos to that effect.